I have 1400 videos, I've never called anybody out. I don't want to be on here tonight talking about false teachers and prophets and calling out witchcraft. Hearing what I'm saying, there's a false reformation happening in the body of Christ. And if you say, well, God has grace and God covers that grace, you can still inherit the kingdom of God, then you are a capital H heretic. Because I hear some of these things that are supposed to be like deep teachings. And I'm like, that's a, that sounds like a joke to me. I feel like you just got up there and just started saying whatever was in your head. I want to break down some of these characteristics of a Simon the Sorcerer, a Christian witch doctor, false prophet. I don't go around shouting, that person's false, that person's false. That's not what I do. Obviously, I have 1,400 videos. I've never called anybody out, never called this person's a heretic by name, none of that. But I want to break down the first chapter of Jude talks a lot about a false teacher and a false prophet. So I'm going to give you five marks, five characteristics quickly here, starting in verse three. It says, dear friends, I've e eagerly been planning to write you about the salvation we all share. But now I find I must write you about something else. So he's go Jude's going, I want to talk to you about salvation that we all share. I want to teach you something. I don't want to be on here tonight teaching this. I don't want to be on here tonight talking about false teachers and prophets and calling out witchcraft. He goes, I want to talk to you about the salvation we all share. But now, this is what he says in verse 3, I must write about something else urging you to defend the faith that God entrusted you once and once for all time to his holy people. Jude says, I got to warn you, there's something happening. There's a Leviathan lurking in the waters of revival. There's something, there's open borders happening right now. There's a border crisis. Things are coming into the church. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? There's a false reformation happening in the body of Christ. Something going on. And he says, I want you to defend the faith. And this is what we're doing. We're fighting back. We're defending the faith. We're not being malicious. We're being biblical. Verse four. I say this. This is Jude. This is incredibly accurate for what's happening in our generation. I say this because some ungodly people have wormed their way into your churches saying, look at this, that God's verse four, God's marvelous grace allows us to live immoral lives. The condemnation of these people was recorded long ago for they've denied our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. What are they doing? What are they doing, Jude? They are causing us to think the marvelous grace of God lets us live immoral lives. It's okay to do this. The Bible says this will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm just going to make a statement here. And if I continue to get banned, then I mean, it is what it is. The Bible says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. I'm just saying, and if you say, well, God has grace and God covers that grace, you can still inherit the kingdom of God, then you are a capital H heretic. The Bible says fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. And if you tell people they can be fornicators, it's not sin and they're okay because the Bible's not clear on it, then you are a capital H heretic. And this is what Jude is talking about. We're using the grace of God and that grace allows us to live immoral lives. So the first sign is, he describes them as what? Type it in the chat, ungodly people. The first sign of false teachers, Christian witch, do witch doctors, the Simon the Sorcerer, false prophets, is they live ungodly lifestyles. They're ungodly right off the bat. They don't have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Their character is not intact. Think of the way they live their lives. If you're allowing other people to worship you and praise you and you're untouchable and you're this, elevated person that's ungodly that's not the way jesus was he was humble the bible says he washed people's feet he washed feet he humbled himself so if we're allowing now people might worship us people might say isaiah and follow me and, and it be a cult like and they worship me but if i allow it that's where the sin comes in so I have to keep saying, it's not about me. Every time I preach, I have to say, it's not about me. Don't wait in line for me. I'm not going to do a show. I'm not going to do a prophetic line. I'm not going to do a deliverance line. I will go in, in and pray for people as I feel led, but I'm not putting on a show for you. It's not about Isaiah. If you start allowing people to worship you, then you are now in sin. So we have to put that safeguard up and say, don't worship me, guys. Follow me as I follow Christ. Don't worship me. So we can't allow worship. We can't allow ungodly because it's ungodly to allow people to worship you. We can't be watching filth. It's ungodly. Okay, we, we got to be careful what we're listening to because these people are worming their way in. Now, I just described some of your guys' favorite preachers. Some of these mega churches, I'm like, how are they wearing a t-shirt 
of some secular band with some demonic imagery on Sunday morning preaching at some of the largest churches in America. What is happening? They're wearing Pink Floyd or is that even the name? I don't know. ACDC. I'm like, you're preaching in an ACDC shirt? Doesn't that stand for Antichrist Devil Child or am I wrong? I'm just like, what? And they're wearing it and the, the, thousands of people are like, yay. I'm like, no. Immoral, ungodly, false teachers. Isaiah is legalistic, then call me legalistic. Oh, I'd rather err on the side of scripture. We're under the new covenant, Isaiah. No, Jude's saying you're using that new covenant grace to live immoral lives. No, we can do better, guys. We can do better. Do not live immoral lives. Look at what Jeremiah 23, 14 says. Among the prophets of Jerusalem, I've seen a horrible thing. The committing of adultery and walking in falsehood. So the prophets in Jeremiah's day were committing adultery, they were sleeping outside of marriage, and they were walking in falsehood. And then it says, they strengthened the hands of evildoers so that no one has turned their back from his wickedness. All of them have become to me like Sodom and their inhabitants like Gomorrah. Jeremiah was calling the prophets of his day. He said, they're like Sodom and Gomorrah to me. They live just like that. They're committing adultery. They walk in falsehood. This is what Jeremiah is saying in Jeremiah 23, 14. They're living immoral life styles. We constantly see preachers fall and they'll continue to fall as long as they're living unchecked. Unchecked. The word of God is not their guide. They have no spiritual covering, no authority. They're living unchecked, doing whatever they want to do. So number one is they live immoral lives. They're ungodly. Number two, mark of a false teacher, false prophet, a Simon the Sorcerer, a Christian witch doctor, is they preach a mixed message. And I've been railing on this, mixing in the new age, mixing in the new age, third eye, astral projection, all this trash, new age, new age. You know what astrologers say? Astrologers and mediums and psychics, this is what they do. Oh, you have a, you have a um, sickness in your body. If you don't give me a, a $500, then you're gonna die of that sickness. That is literally what mediums do. That's what astrologers do. I have a lot of friends that I've done ministry with that came out of the new age that were mediums and astrologers. That's what they did. Give me $500 or this bad thing will happen. And now that same thing is happening in the body of Christ. And y'all are just like, oh, brother, not big deal. Don't speak out against men of God. No, you're not a man of God if you're telling people if they don't pay you, they're gonna die. You're a con artist. That's what you are. You're a grifter. You're not a man of God. I'm telling you right now, if you tell somebody you're going to die in a year and a half, but the Lord says give $1,000 if you want to live, you are, a, you are a faker. You are a con artist. That's what you are. They, number two is they preach a mixed message. Look at what Jeremiah 23, 13 says. Among the prophets of Samaria, I saw an offensive thing. They prophesied by Baal and led my people astray. These are prophets prophesying by Baal, by the power of Baal. They're, they're prophesying. And these are prophets of Samaria, God's prophets of Samaria, prophesying with Baal. So they're mingling in the things of the flesh and the things of the spirit. They're mingling in the new age practice. They're weaving them in, grafting them into the body of Christ. These casino prophets, they're grafting them into the body of Christ right now. And we're, and we're allowing it and we're allowing it. And it's like, oh, and I'm, and, and again, let me just remind you, I'm the bad guy. Let me just remind you, like right now, I'm the bad guy. When me and Mike and Pagani did our video, we are the bad guys now. We're the bad guys now. We're the ones on the out. We're the, oh, you guys are bad. You guys are bad. You spoke against. I literally have lost multiple friendships from making that video. I'm like, oh, I didn't know I wasn't allowed to call out witchcraft. My bad. I didn't know I needed to get permission from all my preacher friends to call out witchcraft. Next time, I'll make sure before I call out sin, I get your permission. That's so weird. That's so weird that we speak the word we call out clear anti-biblical teachings and it's like, oh no, you're bad, you're legalistic, you're self-righteous. Okay. All right. Mixing in the teachings of Baal. Telling people you don't have to live that difficult, narrow road. Preaching an easy gospel. And not even preaching the gospel a lot of the times. Not even preaching the gospel a lot of the times. Just preaching whatever. Whatever new thing that came into your head. I, saw, I listened to some preachers and I'm thinking like, are you sometimes like, just saying whatever comes into your head? Are you just like saying whatever pops in your head? Because I hear some of these things that are supposed to be like deep teachings. And I'm like, that's a, that sounds like a joke to me. I feel like you just got up there and just started saying whatever was in your head. But when you're not in the word, I mean, I guess it's, it's just whatever. 
Whatever pops in your, whatever cool new age sounding thing pops in your head, you're going to say. They teach a mixed message. Jeremiah 23, 17. Look at what it says. They keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said you, said you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, calamity will not come upon you. They basically prophesy peace and prophesy God's okay with your lifestyle, your, your blessings coming, when really all there is is war. Really all there is is war with you and God. Really all there is is nothing but, nothing but darkness in your life. And they're saying like, oh, God says this and God says that. And they're prophesying, dis basically saying your disobedience is okay. They won't talk about judgment. Number three, they deny the Lordship of Christ. They don't deny Jesus, but they deny Jesus lording over people. Jude goes, they denied our only master, the Lord Jesus Christ. They say things like, Jesus is just your friend. Jesus is just a portal. Jesus isn't God. Friend, if you're listening to anybody that says Jesus isn't God, run as fast and as far as you can. Jesus isn't the word. What do you mean he's not the word? Have you not read John 1? I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you're a preacher that hasn't read John chapter 1. If you're going to say Jesus isn't the word, I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt. You haven't read John 1, but I need you to go read John 1. Jesus, of course, is the word, but they deny that lordship, that he's the master. He's not, friend, he's not just your friend. He's your master, and he's not cool with whatever you want to do. He's not like, oh, just chill out, Jesus. Just be hip. It's 2023. Get with it. No. Jude says, he's our master. He's our Lord, and we need to preach the lordship and the mastering of Jesus Christ. Submit to his lordship. He's not just your savior. He's the master of your life. He died as a savior, but he rose as a king and he's Lord. He governs my life. I can't do anything that he doesn't want me to do. My life is not my own. I've given my body to him. That's the bottom line. Okay. He doesn't revolve around my life. My whole world revolves around him. He's the center. He's the center. Look at what Jude it says in verse 12. When these people eat with you in your fellowship meals, commend, commemorating the Lord's love, they're like dangerous reefs that shipwreck you. They're like shameless shepherds who only care for themselves. They're like clouds blowing over land without giving rain. They're like trees that are dead, that bear no fruit, that have been pulled up by the roots. Verse 13, they're like wild waves of the sea, churning up the foam of their shameful deeds. They're like wandering stars, doomed forever to the blackest darkness. Whoa! This is what Judah has to say about false teachers and prophets that have come into the church, that are amongst the church of that day dead trees uh churning up waves that churn up foam of sh shameful deeds stars that are doomed to the blackest darkness shameless shepherds clouds that blow over land but don't give out any rain whoa this is what he says this is strong i am not even being this strong i'm being strong but not this strong but notice what he says they can shipwreck you they're dangerous reefs you don't know what a reef is, it's literally in the ocean and you can be driving your boat and hit a reef in the middle of the ocean and shipwreck your boat, thinking it's deep, but really there's a reef there. And he says, you're just following them, you're just riding along and thinking everything's fine and then boom, you hit that reef and it shipwrecks your faith. Ever since I started listening to that guy, I don't know what happened, this bad thing, that, boom, your, your faith has been shipwrecked because you're wandering away from God and protection. Okay, that's number three. Number four, I'm only going by what Jude said. These are the marks of a false teacher according to Jude. Number four is, they constantly claim authority from their dreams and visions. Look at what verse eight says. Again, don't get mad at me, get mad at Jude. Look what he says in verse eight. In the same way, these people who claim authority from their dreams live immoral lives, defy authority, and scoff at supernatural beings. So what do they do? They live immoral, they defy authority, they claim authority from their dreams. They're always dreaming. Every five seconds, an angel's talking to them. Every five seconds, they're at the throne of God. Every five seconds, they're, you know, uh, God just showed me an angel, an angel, an angel. I'm like, you just talked to like 35 different angels in the, in the span of a 30 minute live stream. Every second, you're at the throne of God. How are you the only? I'm, my head just is like, I'm just trying to figure out how are you the only preacher in America? that every five minutes you're at the throne of God getting a revelation for that person. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you're the most special God's anointed person, but I'm just, I'm very leery of this. I had a dream and you're giving authority by a dream, a dream, a, a lot of emotionalism, a lot of a dream, a lot of a prophetic word. God told me 
No, he didn't. Just stop lying. He didn't tell you I was going to die in two years. He didn't tell you if I came against your teachings, I would my ministry would be shipwrecked. Friend, for 12 years, I've had ministers say, don't touch God's anointing. If you preach against what I'm preaching, you're going to die. And that was 12 years ago. I'm still alive. So stop trying to say, God is not out here killing people for you. I'm sorry to tell you, but God's not like, who do you want me to kill next? Who else is speaking against you? Stop with that don't touch God's anointing, taking that out of context and saying, oh, watch what happens if you keep trying to come against me. You, oh, you're going to get it. God's going to kill me. God's going to kill you. No. The reason why we have to threaten people with, I'm going to sue you, I'm going to take you to court, is because God is not out here killing nobody. If God was doing that, then why you got to take people to court? You know what I'm saying here? So stop with this whole don't touch God's anointed, be, watch out, be careful. That's just, just, just intimidation. Preaching the word of God is what we're called to do. But claiming authority from visions and dreams. Jeremiah 23, 16. Thus says the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the prophets who are prophesying to you. They're leading you into futility. They speak a vision of their own imagination. It's not from the mouth of the Lord. So they're speaking from their own mind, their own imagination, claiming it to be God. It wasn't the Lord. It was you. Jeremiah 23, 30. Therefore, I'm against these prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words from each other. What else are they doing? They're just stealing prophetic words from each other. They hear a good word or a good message and they steal it and take it and use it as God showed me. God told me, no, he didn't. You took it from someone else. You stole the word. Just say, I got this message from so-and-so. I send my notes to people all the time. I'm like, use my notes, feel free. But don't say God showed me this when really it was your friend that gave you the notes. Okay, it's just, it's, uh, it's disingenuous. Okay, verse five, last mark of a false teacher, false prophet. They refuse any accountability and responsibility. Jude says they scoff at authority. False prophets evade Write this down, accountability. They'll say things like, touch not mine anointed. And that's a true statement. You should not harm anyone anointed by God, but that's out of context. They're using it to escape accountability. They can live sinful lives and then say, touch not my anointed. So they think by you testing their word, which we're commanded to do, I'm going to show you this, or holding them accountable, which is all I'm doing tonight, that you're trying to harm them. Why did you come? I'm like, I didn't come against you. I came against the teaching and you, you thought I was coming against you because you scoff at authority. You evade accountability. You evade authority. There is a lot of guys that all of their accountability is yes men. All of their authority is yes men. And if you don't agree with them, then they kick you out of their life. I get it. It's fine. But don't lie and act like that's not what's happening. Now, the verse they quote comes from Psalms 105.13. And it's about doing wrong to God's anointed, but it's not about holding a prophet accountable to what the Bible says. Let me say that again. The verse they quote about touch not my anointed is from Psalms 105, 13. And it's not about holding prophets and teachers accountable to what they're teaching. It's about harming, physically harming God's anointed. Look at what 1 John 4, 1 says. It says, test the spirits. So we're just doing what the Bible says. We're testing and like, ah, that didn't pass the test. The test is, did that manifestation lead people to Jesus? Is it, give, is it lining up with scripture? If I just say, nope, that doesn't line up with scripture, you've already pa you failed the test. That spirit's not from God. Doesn't line up with scripture, not from God. But the guys that don't line up with scripture will say, it doesn't have to line up with scripture. And absolutely, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, so 1 John 4, 1, test the spirits. 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says, judge prophecy. So I'm commanded to judge prophecy. If I give a prophetic word, I, I'm prophesying tonight, someone can judge it. Feel free, judge it. If you don't think it's from God, cool. All right, but we're called to judge prophecy according to scripture. I'm called to judge prophecy. First Timothy 5, 19 through 20 speaks of accountability and it says it's not wrong or it doesn't harm people to hold them accountable. So false prophets will often take to social media to try to discredit anyone that's keeping them accountable. They'll just take to social media and they'll go, oh, this person, this, and they'll defend themselves and their fault. Instead of repenting and saying, I, I was wrong here. I was wrong. I shouldn't have said that. I, re I regret it. The word didn't come to pass or I prophesied wrongly or I preached something that was an error or I said something wrong. Sorry. I made my sorry video about not knowing about a, a liquid death commercial. I was, I was, I was not informed. I had the wrong facts. I gave wrong facts about the commercial and I made a full apology video. I'm sorry. I didn't know the facts. Someone gave me the facts. And so here I am saying, sorry over something that trivial, how much more if I'm preaching a false doctrine and then I learn the doctrines, false, heretical, anti-biblical, would I, should I come on here and say, Hey guys, I know I said 
this wasn't wrong, this sin wasn't wrong, but actually I was wrong because it is wrong according to the Bible. I'm sorry, please forgive me. That's all you have to do. But instead, you try to like backtrack and say, oh, well, and you clean it up. No, we don't do that. We need to, don't take the social media to discredit the people calling you out. Look at the teaching and go, maybe third eye is not godly. Maybe there's a reason why the new age uses it and it's not in the Bible. Uh, maybe I shouldn't tell people get $5,000 or they won't get married. Or maybe I shouldn't tell people they're going to die in two years. Maybe I don't have a biblical precedent to walk around telling people you're going to die in a year or not and prophesying death over them. So I think we need to be careful that we're not writing to our influential friends and our influential networks to justify what the word of God tells us we shouldn't justify. It's time for us, all of us, to break out of the confusion, the delusion, thinking that we can buy the anointing. Lord, help us to break out of confusion in Jesus' name.